Hi everybody, Jo here again. Welcome to another Crafty Catch-Up. I hope you're having a good week and, and I hope things are, are going well. I know there's some sticky situations going around. Some of our lovely followers haven't been very well. So before we start, I just want to send those lovely ladies and gentlemen a big hug from all of us because I think it's important because we all have down times, don't we? And think times when we're not too well. And you know what? It's that that friendship and love of, of friends that um can really get us through. So um so yeah, so just a big hug to all you that need it. Now today we're just gonna have a nice play with this sort of design. I say this sort of design because you know what I'm like. I don't really like doing the same thing. So we'll do something similar. I'm I'm just like that. It, what are you like? We're all different, aren't we? And that's great. I love the fact that we're so different. You know, it's like I love being part of the Lavinia family where we all have a different approach to crafting and we love the products, but we just use them in different ways. And and for me, that that's fabulous because we can all get inspiration from each other. And, and that's what it's all about. Um. So, yes, we're going to do something similar to this. And I've gone for a DL card. As you know, I love these um, slimline uh, double length cards. Um, and, and I just think there's something classy about them. But this design, I'm thinking you could actually, I know a lot of you like using the 6x6, six six, but you could actually pop this on a 6x6 six six square design. Or you could even make it larger. And I've got to be honest, I'm looking forward to how the topper I create today, I'll be popping in my journal on Monday. So I'm quite excited about how I'm going to do that. Already I'm thinking, and that's the beauty of I love this Mindful Monday, that whatever I create on a Tuesday, I'm then thinking, how can I add that into my journal? So for me, it's lovely that I can produce a card design, but also something to go in my journal. And I just love the versatility. So I've got my piece of multifarious card and I know you're going to ask me what size it is and you know my noddle. Um, it's three and a half inches by sort of seven and three quarters. It works better in centimetres I'm afraid but I know I know you like your inches. Um, now as always I'm just going to start off with my black sharpie line round just because me being me I can't do it at the end. And again, I've said this before, we all know what we're like and you just have to go with whatever suits you as a crafter. But <laughs> you know what? I think that's something about life. We all have to go with what suits us, don't we? I mean, I do think it's interesting. I did um, one of my A-levels was psychology I, and I loved it, you know, because I love the fact we are different. You know, it's a bit like crafters, as I say, we're all different. But as people, we're different. And I love that. I find that so, you know, our little quirks, things we like, things we don't like. You know, like me, I have plenty of these little quirks, don't I? have plenty of my little habits. But for me, that's what makes, you know, makes us interesting. So I've gone round that first. I distracted you there by a bit of chatting, didn't I? <laughs> now, what we're going to do first... I know this white border, I do it quite a lot. And again, that's just one of my quirks. It's something I was taught it years and years ago. And um, it's something, you know, the, these old designs come back time and time again. And you'll have favourites like I do. But what I like about this is I actually want to stamp Rufus so his tail is coming down into the white border. So it's not a complete white border like we've done before. So again, it's just putting that little bit of a, a twist on it. So this is Rufus and he's one of our lovely foxes and I'm going to stamp him in black and he's a silhouette so I need to make sure I get plenty of ink on. Now I know some of you have asked why I don't use a stamping press to do this and I have got one that I have used in workshops but I do feel I know myself when I started um creating I'm not very good at stamping it is my weakness and I know that so I think if I can overcome that with just a stamping block then I can hopefully help anybody else who has that um I do suffer from arthritis in in quite a few of my joints and um I think because I'm little I'm just a bit weak so 
I've had problems with my shoulders and, you know, like we all do. I'm, I'm not moaning, I'm just saying I think that's why. So with the silhouette, I just have to make sure I get plenty of income and check it in the light. And that's why I have my copy of paper in my magazine. For me, that just works well. Now, I want to pop him sort of here. And then for me, I will keep my stamp on the card, probably longer than most of you will, which again is just something for me because it's a silhouette. I just feel, and I've found um, in the past, if I take the stamp up too quickly, especially if I'm nervous about it not stamping, um, then it won't stamp. And I know there are some um, crafters out there that can literally, even with a silhouette, can ink it up, stamp it down, lift it up. And that is great. Honestly, I think that's wonderful. But I am just not one of those. And as I say, I, I don't know why. It is just one of those quirks that I'm not. So for me, it's looking at a way of how I can be successful with a stamp like this. And that's where, for me, I have to be honest and have to show you. And if it doesn't stamp properly, because of any of this, I will show you ways around it. You know, I always say, when you come into my little world, you're coming into my craft room with me. And, you know, you, you get this warts and all, there's no editing. This is you just coming for coffee with me or tea. I have both. Um, hot chocolate even, maybe. Marshmallows. And, you know, this is where we get along together. So let's have a look at that. So as you can see, that's stamped beautifully. And for me, that's the way I just have to have to approach it. Um, and I'm just going to give that a quick wipe. And again, me being me, I'm afraid I have to just with a damp cloth and then my inky binky, just clean Rufus before I put him back on his carrier sheet and put him away. I'm just going to turn him over, give him a bit of a blot. And then what I'll do is I'm going to come in and put my tape on. Now, a few of you asked, Lavinia now sell low-tack tape. And I can assure you it is low-tack. It's fabulous. I don't need to um, put it on my clothes to take any tackiness off. It's perfect as it is. So I'm just going to use my mat. And let's see if... Oh, that, that's a stroke of luck, isn't it? Look at that. If I line up on the bottom here... And then I can actually put tape between there and there. And you can see with the tail how much you actually want to get. And I've still got room for a sentiment there. Now, some people like to turn these over. I'm happy just leaving mine as they are. And this is just a nice way of getting a little bit of a change on that. You know, I, I don't know what it is, but I almost get a bit bored with designs easily. And, and I'm always thinking of ways of just sort of mixing it up a bit. Now, this is the Fern Branch. There are two of these and I'm going to use the larger one. There are two in this set. And I'm going to come in at the side, but I want to be mindful. I want Mr. Rufus to be looking at one of our Christmas charms. So that's sort of going to give me an indication. And I know I have to turn it round again. I do apologise. Just the way my head works. So I'm thinking if I've got a charm sort of hanging there, I want a branch for it to hang from. So we'll, we'll go for that. And I want to keep, I'm just going to keep my stamping in black. I could have added another colour. I'm just going to keep it all in black for this. What I will do is just introduce a little bit of second and third. Just, if I just bring that round. So if you're one of our lovely new followers, welcome. And um, I would say, pull up a chair, make yourselves at home. Come on, join in, don't be scared. So if you're not sure, your second generation is just once you've stamped that initial stamp, you've taken off that almost first layer of ink, but there's actually a little bit of ink left on your stamp. And that's called the second generation. And you can use that here, look. And it just makes it look like those branches are in the distance. And sometimes it fills a space, but it's not overpowering. It's not in your face. So we always like a little bit of second generation. And you might as well use that ink. So let's just put one here and then one there and one there. And third, look, you can get second and third. So I'm liking that shape there. 
so I'm happy with that. So again, just with my, my wet cloth and then my, my inky binky, we shall just put that back on. And I always like to put my stamps back on my carry sheet, even when I'm doing a YouTube, because I don't want to lose any. And I find just for me that, you know, we do. Do you know what I found? I must just tell you this. You know, if ever you've lost a stamp, we're forever getting um, crafters. We all lose little stamps, don't we? I've lost one of my little pixie houses and I found it. I have a box of pencils that has two layers and I found it underneath, stuck on the bottom of one so it's a box of pencils that has a bit like, you know, your chocolates have two layers and it was actually stuck. So check under things like tins, but also it was actually inside under the layers. So that's a little tip if you lose. I know one lady found hers the other day on a slipper, didn't she? First place I look is Eric. <laughs> Oh, sorry, mate. Put your head back down. Go back to sleep. I, I do check because chances are <laughs> he might have it. So Christmas charms. We've got three. They are lovely. One's a star. One's a bauble with a star. And I like this one, the actual bauble shape. I just have a thing about it. So I want this. I want him to be looking. I want Rufus. So let me just sort of get it in eyesight. So I'm thinking if I put it off that branch there. Now, I'm not worried about where I stamp these because I'm going to decoupage that. So, and there we go. I think he's looking. Sorry, I should turn it round, shouldn't I? I think he's looking up at that. So, we'll have another one. And I'm going to ink up right up. I love this lovely long stem, but I don't think I'll need it all. I think I want a shorter one up here. So, perhaps we could have it from there. So I'll just use my copy of paper to just, I don't want them the same height, you see, because that would look wrong. I want it random. And then I'm thinking, let's, I want one hanging from here. Just for that continuity. Actually, it would look nice at this side. On my original, I had it here, but I think it'll look better this side. Well, just change it up a bit. But when you do this one, be mindful. You don't want the, the end of the chain. So let's just pop. In fact, I'll cover that. So I'm just going to go. Just takes a little bit of the design below. And I think that looks nice. And we've got three then, which I think is, a again, a, a nice number. I think on my original, I think I went a bit mad. I had five. But this is the sort of card design I'm thinking. You could really Christmas eat up. Um... Mine's sort of going to be a bit sort of autumnal, so I'm going to keep the colours. But you could really, if you wanted, um, make this into a snowy scene. Well, let's give that a blot. And the reason I blot it so much is VersaFine Clay is a slower drying ink. And if you don't blot it, what I found when I come to adding the next stage, which is adding the ink, then chances are me being me that that'll smudge. And we don't want that. So now you could leave this card black and white. And what's nice about the designs, you, you can stop at any stage, but I'm thinking let's add some colour. So I'm going to use two greens, the elements. So we've got lime punch and we've got pine. So I'll pop the lids there. And again, I'm afraid me being me, I'm just going to turn this onto the side. I just want to check you can still see and I've got my my stencil brush I use for green and I'm gonna come in first with the what did I say this is pine and again always into your lid get in the habit that's your palette I don't want to put any sticky finger marks on here so I'm just going to start in the corner first and just come in just bring it in gradually and flick it in from the sides Again, the worry is if you go straight into the middle, you, you, you'll get lines. So again, I'll pick some colour up from the lid look and then just sort of circular motions and along the bottom. 
I'm going to pick a bit more colour and just flick it from the side. And what you'll find is gradually that'll fill up the whole space. And we'll flick a little bit down from the masking tape. And then if we want to build up the colour again, start around the edges because you want the edges deeper. And then as you've got less ink, just blend that colour in. And it's a good way of practising your blending. Right, so I like that. We'll just move it down a little. Now let's add a little bit here. And this is just a quick way of adding colour. So again, I'm just going to flick some colour in and sort of go up to Rufus, but leave a bit of a space. So that almost gives him a bit of a halo. So that sort of accentuates him. And we'll just add, we could have added a few landscapes, but I'm thinking we'll just add one. So if we come in with our hill masks, and let's go for a, a hilly one. And I'm thinking, I don't want that would look silly above his ears, wouldn't it? So I need to just offset this a little. I don't want to go that ball, but I want to keep the shape. Right, I think that's nice. It's important just to sort of think it through like that. Now I'm going to come into Lime Punch now. Now Lime Punch is a lighter colour, but I'm not worried about going from dark to light because the two will blend nicely together. And I just want it to be a wee bit lighter just to help it make it look like these hills are in the distance. So again, a nice light, just tickle, just tickle that stencil and again, leave a space around Rufus look. And can you see how that's lighter? And also we've almost got that glow. It just helps give Rufus a, a bit of a glow. I think he's had his ready break. For those of you that remember ready break, it was, um, if you're not all fame with that, it's probably a, I don't know, is it a British thing? Do we have ready break all over? Um, it's just like a breakfast cereal that you had warm milk. And there was an advert years ago that said it gave you a glow. <laughs> It was a clever advert for, for winter. So we'll come in now with our circle mask. Now again, with this, think about what size you want and where to place it, because this can make a difference. Now I could have, if I'd wanted, to have taken the hill further down and almost put a spotlight. We did spotlights the other week, didn't we? Put a spotlight over that bauble. But I don't actually want it to look like a spotlight. I want it to look like it's the moon. And I just think... Almost again, following that line. But I think just off the page here, so it's just behind the trees. So it's not in your face. It's just part of the design, but not the main part. But what I do want to do, look, is I've got green ink on my mat here. So we'll give that a spritz and we'll wipe that up. Otherwise, it will contaminate my next colour. Again, it's just good housekeeping. That's the closest I'll get to any housekeeping today, that's for sure. So we're going to have a bit of Merlot now. And again, lid off. I'm going to get my, my Merlot brush. Now I'm just going to turn my work like this just because it's easier for me. And I'm just thinking there. So again, in the ink and on the lid. Now this is quite a deep colour look, you can see that. So again, it's really important, take some off, blend it on the lid and then come onto my mask first. And if you start at the bottom flicking your colour, because you've got the most ink on your brush, I know I've said this before, but then it's going to be darker at the bottom and this will help when you're creating depth anyway. If the colour's too dark at the top, then where are you going to go when you come to do the base? You've got to go even deeper. So I can take that off, look, and we've got that lovely colour. But I can also then pick a little bit more up from the lid, look. And again, just flick in, just gently, gently. And these brushes are fabulous for this. Just flick the colour into the side. And I know you're probably shouting at me that I've gone right over my baubles with the various colours. I'm going to decoupage the baubles. So again, that's my cheat. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be careful. Because we're just going to add a wispy bit. And again, I've got less ink on my brush now. So I can just go over there. 
if I wanted, I could add a little bit of wispiness over the moon there. So it just looks like there's a cloud going over the moon. But again, make sure you've got less ink when you do that. So just a quick wipe of my circle mask before I put that away. And have a look how we're doing. So I think that's building up beautifully, isn't it? Let's just clean our mat again. And then I want to add a little bit more detail in the background. So we're just going to add a little bit of background stamping. Now, again, you don't have to do this bit. Like I say, the beautiful about these techniques and these demonstrations, you can stop or leave bits off if you're not keen on them. And we're going to use that the stamp snow falls but if you notice there's an i've got an arrow on the back all my sentiment stamps have an arrow on the back because i am that sort of person who will stamp them upside down i'm also that sort of person who doesn't get them straight on the block now i'm going to do tone on tone for this i'm going to come in with the merlot but these are very um quite juicy pads so don't press too hard when you're inking up a sentiment and I want it in the background anyway but I find if I press too hard I literally get the ink everywhere and I have just gone over the edge here but now again check it on your card I think we're going to go second maybe a bit of third and I think we'll just catch this edge. And again, each one of these, you just want to make sure you don't overdo it. When you're doing something like this, you don't want the words to overpower. So I'm thinking I'll take that off and just come in here. There, I think that's enough. I don't want to go any further down. So again... Give our sentiment a clean and it just adds i could if i wanted add the green and come into here i could actually take the merlot all the way down again you could batch card make these and just alter them as you go in just alter them slightly what i do want to do is just add a little bit of water along here so with my fan brush just going to just to do a bit of faux bleaching and especially down here so I'm just going to flick some water I want to do it while my tape's still here and again we've stamped in permanent ink so that won't move if this moves that's fine because I want this in the background so I'm quite happy with that how that'll go so while that dries, what I'm going to do is, are you like me? Do you save all your strips of card? I do. So I'm going to decoupage the baubles. I'd be glad to know I have got some that I've cut out. But if I show you, I literally, on a spare piece of card like this, and especially when I'm thinking I'm going to make a few designs with these stamps on, for Christmas so if I've got a spare few minutes and I love to have jobs like this that um, I do when I do have you know you've got five minutes say when your dinner's cooking or so I will just stamp myself a row of baubles and then they're there ready for you to add colour however you want now it might be you want to use your pencils. The um, watercolour pencils work beautifully. For this design, I must admit, all I did was put a little bit of the Merlot on my mat. Got my paintbrush and then painted because I want this to match. And again, you will take your time. And I actually did a whole row of these earlier. I 
so you don't want to see me paint them all but i did a whole row again you can vary the colors now the other thing i like to do is either add glossy accents or clear embossing powder over the top now again if you're going to do that your glossy accents will take time to dry now some people do that at the end i like to do mine before i cut it out and i find it easier to leave it to dry and then cut it out and also with the um clear embossing i use the wow embossing pen which is a lovely pen with the sticky ink in so you can color use your clear ink and then when you cut them out look your baubles just have that lovely shimmer so again your clear embossing there's only there's two coats of it there i'll pop them on there probably easier for you to see on there I mean you can leave them you don't need to add that it's just something else for you a little tip something else to add if you wish now i have said before if you're worried about your low tack tape you can use your heat tool but i want to show you this without so i can just show you exactly what it does come off like look at that how easy is that it is so low tack honestly and that's without but should you wish you just pop i would heat this because you've done your faux bleaching give it a quick heat but also if you're worried about your low tack tape heat front and back but that came off as you could saw just like butter absolutely beautiful now what i do want to do just with my fine liner pen is just you could leave this blank but i just want to add a little bit of a a wiggly line now again you could use a ruler if you want a straight line i just want a, a wiggly line and add a little bit of heart monitor but also i'm really into this drawing and adding bits so i'm just going to add a little bow there and we'll add one here on the tree now again if when you stamped there was a gap you could just draw that in with your pen and nobody will ever know and we'll have a couple there as though it's just swinging in the breeze look those two we'll have those so the movement now a couple of finishing tricks you know i love this bit and i'm just going to come in with my pastel pencils and we'll have the white one and we'll just give mr mr rufus fox a little bit of shape i love the way his I know that his legs going to be that shape there and just on his brush here we'll just add a few we don't want to overcook it and again it's the pastel pencils so I'm just smudging it with my finger to to help fix it and just on his nose now you can use a gel pen for this if you want just me being me I'm a bit the gel pen scares me a bit so I just but again I know a lot of you love the gel pens and that's fine, you use them. I just like the subtleness of the, the white pastel pencil for me. But, you know, we're all different. And that's all I'm going to do with that. And then I'm just thinking, let's add a little bit of frostiness. So we'll come in with our pan pastel and this is that white fine pearl medium. And it just gives a lovely little frosty sort of feel. So with my applicator look, I'm just going to put it along the top of the hill here. Because as I say, it's not an actual snowy scene. This You could use, do your blue and make it snowy. But I'm sort of going for a, a frostier feel. So I can put it round the moon. And again, I'm just going to smudge it with my finger. Can you see? I'm not sure if we can we can get that. And also just on a couple of the branches, I just want that sort of frosty, so the frost's in the air. And maybe just on his nose and just a bit on his tail. Just put some on here. And if you bear with me, I'll just stand up and see if I can get... Can you see that frostiness there? And it just adds, now again, you might not want to do this, but I just think it adds a lovely frosty feel. 
and then also I want to add a little bit of little bit of snow. So I'm going to come in with the Posca, give it a good shake. And a couple of people have asked recently their Posca hasn't worked. So shake it, but also it's a pump. So pump it up. If it's not working, give it a good pump. They are pump action Poscas. And I want some light, little delicate bits of snow. So I'm going to give it a gentle tap. And as you can see, with that, we'll have a few over Mr. Fox, Mr. Rufus, not too many. And as you can see, that gives you the nice, gentle white. But I also want a few splodges, which I like. But if you don't like your, your big splats, stop. <laughs> you don't need to add them. But I just fancy a few of those. So... I'm, I'm adding both. We'll just clean that up. And I've got my three lovely little baubles here ready. So I'm going to use my bittity boppity glue. And mine's nearly at the end. So I'm actually storing mine, look, that way up. But you can see it really is at the end. But I want every little bit out of it because I'm a, a crafter, aren't I? So, and let's get these. And I could have put the glue on the bauble, but just for me, I find it better to just put it on my card. I just find it a bit easier, especially when I'm doing these YouTubes, because you know what? If I'm going to make a mess of it, it's going to be when you're all watching. So there we go. And this dries clear, dries quick, so that's beautiful. And lastly, I want a sentiment there. So in my sentiment stickers, look, I've got so many of these now I have to keep them in a little sheet because I've got so many with odd. <laughs> now, this is the hardest bit, I'm sorry. It's which uh, cherish. Oh, that was quick. No, magical. See, <laughs> changed my mind. Right, so I'm going to go magical. And as always, my little tip, I'm just going to pop it on my scissors so that I can decide whereabouts. Now, I think that will actually just fit. Do you know what? What a stroke of look. I think that fits beautifully in that gap between the bauble and Rufus's tail. That was a stroke of look, wasn't it? You watch, I'll probably look up now and find out I've not been recording this and have to do it again. <laughs> so, as always, just with my black fine liner, I just want to highlight that. But also, it just goes with the whole idea of this squiggly line. Again, if that's not your bag, you don't, you know, don't do it. Just do however much you feel comfortable with. If you wanted to add some little berries to these, that would be lovely. You could add some little dots, couldn't you? Make Add some berries. I may actually do that in my journal. Mm, see, there's a thought. Thanks for that. Whoever shouted that, thank you. So that's what we've come up with today and as I say lots of possibilities there I'm hoping lots of ideas for you because a couple of you have messaged and said your mojo's gone so I'm hoping that might give you some ideas great for a man's card maybe alter the colours maybe just do it in green or add some Della blue for the sky but that could be happy birthday there birthday wishes doesn't have to be Christmas, does it? We've got the Christmas baubles, but it doesn't have to be. So hopefully that's given you lots of ideas. And if I just bring the two down a little, see, I've just stood up now so I can see what you're seeing. So if I put that one on there. So you take care, everybody. As always, thank you for joining me. Thank you for all your lovely comments. It's so lovely. As I say, such a lovely community on here. I'm hoping you like this idea. If you do something similar, maybe change it up a bit. But do post it, please, and tag me in because I love to see what you're doing and it inspires other people. And that's the important thing. You know, by putting something on, you might just make somebody's day. But also, please comment on each other's work. Because, you know, if you're somebody who's at home and having a bad time and say your confidence is low and, and you put a piece of artwork on and you're not sure whether you like it or not, by us commenting on it and being friends with each other and being kind, you know what? That can just make somebody's day. It can make the difference. So I urge you, please, 
do start commenting on each, on each other's work. It's so important. Anyway, you take care. I'm off now. Time to walk Eric. He's sat here looking at me with those longing eyes. <laughs> Much love and hugs from me. I'll see you on Monday. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.